Hello, Wonder Rosie here, off-roading through the beautiful desert in Arizona, checking out all kinds of weird, wacky, and wonderful stuff hidden in the outback, like this semi-sketchy biker bar in the middle of nowhere, and you can watch the video I made about that, but now I'm headed around the corner from the biker bar. There's supposed to be a really nice cabin, and I'm curious to see if this cabin is as nice as they say because I've been trying to get up here for a few years now. Somebody told me about this place years ago and it's taking me this long to get out here. So let's get in the car, strap in for safety and go try to find this cabin. <laughs> uh oh, look at this. For entrance, push buzzer. Boy, this cabin must be even fancier than I thought. Uh, actually, I think I had faulty intel because I can see the cabin from here. And it ain't very fancy. Guess we'll find out. Let's just drive the rest of the way to the dang cabin. Da 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 da. Oh dear. Yeah, uh, my intel. I didn't mean for this to be like a super clickbaity video. My intel indicated, or I thought, there was a really fancy cabin right by that biker bar. Apparently there isn't, but as luck would have it, there is another very interesting little cabin for us to poke around. Okay, so this road kind of dead ends in a little wash here that I parked at the end of. And then the cabin, quote unquote, is right over here. Now, Oh gosh, I don't even know where to start. I mean, obviously there's nowhere near as many weird things to look at as at that biker bar, but I'll bet you anything there's almost certainly some pretty interesting stuff in this rustic and rusty little shack. Okay, the first thing I noticed, and you may might have noticed, is there's a sign up top that says Woody's. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and guess some guy named Woody used to live here. Uh, fun fact, my dad's nickname was actually Woody because my last name, his last name was, was Woodall. And though his first name was actually Stephen. Well, you know how it is when your last name is Woodall, they call you Woody. No, his nickname was not Woody because of any other reason that I know of. Anyway, my dad passed away many years ago, but dad, looking at this cabin, I'm thinking of you. This one's for you, Pops. Okay, so I'm gonna guess this was probably some lonely prospector's cabin way back in the day because it looks real old. I mean, you can see it's covered in corrugated tin panels, but the framework is, well, I was gonna say railroad ties, but I don't know if this is a railroad. I think it might just be big old pieces of wood. Wooden cabin. Uh, oh gosh, it's gonna be, let me zoom out. It's a tight squeeze in here. It's just a small one-room cabin. Really more of a shelter than a cabin, I mean. It's just a bare dirt floor, although it looks like it did have a concrete foundation, a concrete floor at one time, but now it's just covered in dirt. Back door's missing. The windows are missing. Uh, well, there's a fridge, and we'll see if there's anything inside the fridge in a minute. Front door that we just walked in is missing, and it looks like... Oh, look, there's a toilet seat hanging on the wall. It says, after 25 years of crappy service, I officially retire at Woody's. Oh, and then look at this. Trump pissing on the Democrats. Every time I start to forget what state I'm in, I'm reminded that this could only be Arizona. Actually, that sticker is kind of funny because it's supposed to be like the Calvin pissing logo. You know, like uh, Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. Remember that comic strip of the little boy and his tiger buddy that got into all kind of crazy adventures? And it, it was really a philosophical comic strip. And the guy who drew that comic strip is super interesting. I read some interviews with him and he was very steadfast in his refusal to commercialize Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, I know he sold like a literal ass ton of, of books. And then he was syndicated in a bunch of newspapers. So I'm sure he made a pretty penny off of that. But when it came to like merchandising, um, I know this one toy company really wanted to make a stuffed Hobbes doll and he refused because he didn't want to commercialize Calvin and Hobbes. So I found it especially interesting that years later, this whole Calvin pissing decal became, became a thing. If you've ever seen a, well, if you've ever been to a NASCAR game, you've probably seen a pickup truck with a decal on the back that looks like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes 
pissing on something. And, you know, he'll, if it's on a Ford truck, it's probably Calvin pissing on a Chevy. If it's on a Chevy truck, it's probably Calvin pissing on a Ford. Uh, it could be Calvin pissing on Osama Bin Laden. It could be Calvin pissing on Dale Earnhardt. It could be Calvin pissing on any number of things. It was a big thing back in the, I guess, early 2000s. <laughs> I mean, it was everywhere. And so this interview that I read with Bill Watterson, the guy who did the Calvin and Hobbes comic books, remember, this guy refused to even make uh, Hobbes stuffed tigers. Well, the interviewer asked him, well, what do you, how do you feel about all these Calvin pissing decals? Because they're everywhere, or at least they were, and apparently still are in the middle of nowhere, Arizona. Anyway, the interviewer asked Bill Watterson how he felt about that. And Bill Watterson is a boss, man. He was so zen about it. He said something to the effect of, well, it's funny to think that that's what my legacy is, but uh, like basically he just shrugged, you know, he never tried to pursue legal action against whoever made those stickers. He just, he just kind of accepted that it was a thing. And I think that's really cool because, well, I'm a fan of low brow humor and the lowest of the lowest brow humor is a Calvin pissing decal. Golly, I almost want to make my own, like, wonder hussing pissy, wonder hussy pissing de decals. Wouldn't that be funny? And it's funny because, like, the, the drawing of Calvin, it was originally him holding a water balloon from some comic strip where he was, you know, he's kind of crouched over going, eh, holding a water balloon. Well, some artist made it to where he's pissing instead. And, well, that's how come you see stuff like that. And apparently Bill Watterson doesn't mind at all. Bill Watterson, if you happen to be watching this video... <laughs> I'm thinking of you. Uh, anyway, sorry about that long uh, detour, but that just kind of reminded me of that. There's a bunch of old stuff up on this shelf. Like, you know, look at this old gas can, just completely shot full of bullet holes. You wouldn't be able to keep an ounce of gas in that thing nowadays. And then just like the last place we explored, there's dollar bills uh, stapled up all over the walls here. Not as many as the first place, but a decent number of them. I mean, they're on the walls. They're on the ceiling. Oh gosh, look what I found on the ground. Hello there. <laughs> Part of an old plastic skull. I'll just set it on the shelf here. Anyway, there really isn't much to this little cabin. It's just one room. Like I said, no floor, no nothing. Uh, fire pit sitting right in the middle of it. It almost looks like it's set up to be a bar or a short order window. Because there's a counter here by the window that looks outside. And outside, oh look, outside there's a little kind of like a porch, a little roofed in porch with a little table. You can sit out there and drink some beers. That's cool. But back inside, okay, let's look in this refrigerator. Big ol' looks like it was Norg brand. Norga. <laughs> then there's all these people's names and stickers up here from various off-roading clubs. I guess you'd call them the Gritty Critters Off-Road. Yuma Country Club RV. You wouldn't get an RV down here. Let me tell you something. The road was rough. Oh, uh, here we go. Drop off your message to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris here. I think you're probably supposed to put that in a t over a toilet. That's just my guess. I mean, I've become fairly adept at deciphering this Arizona humor by now. Oh, look, here's a Adventure Bound Overland, Off the Grid Rentals, Rocky Point Renegades. Wow, all kind of stickers. Okay, well, let's look inside and see if there's anything in here. Well, uh, just a whole bunch of bullet holes in. Tyler, we love you. R.I.P. Man, I guess that's just the way it goes with these off-roading places. You want to leave a memorial of some sort to a loved one that you're missing. And, well, what better place to do so than in a bullet hole ridden refrigerator? I mean, yikes. Boy, this whole fridge is actually a shrine to Tyler. Because look over here. Uh, it says 122.98 slash 8.21.20. So I'm guessing maybe he was born in 98 and died in 2020. Mama will celebrate your life every day, son. I love you. Tyler Joseph Dyer. Well, Mama, I'd say you're doing a good job celebrating the life of Tyler in this old refrigerator. Oh, wow. Look here. Even some Canadians left a $5 bill. How about that? A Canadian $5 bill. I don't know what the exchange rate is right now, but... Isn't that worth more than one US dollar? Good on you. And they say Canadians are cheap. And somebody did take the trouble to put this cool coffee can full of dried twigs on top of the fridge as a sort of decorative vase. That's nice. Oh, look at this. This is actually super cool. Little metal rose. Oh man. If I wasn't an ethical explorer, I would be sorely tempted to take this. This is really cool, but I'll just leave it right here where I found it on top of Tyler's memorial. Mm, what's this? Well, it's a Kerr's Light can with a little Receipt next to it. Six inch white 
ham cheddar with lettuce, $6.85 plus tax. Wow, it's almost like a haiku, a haiku describing the kind of folk who come hang out here and leave their beer cans behind. White and full of ham and cheddar, and I would be willing to bet you anything that that's iceberg lettuce. Because that's the only truly American lettuce. Ain't none of that commie kale going in my sandwich. Oh, look here. Somebody from the Long Beach Police Department put a patch up on the wall. That's cool. A uh, couple koozies. One for the Chiefs and one for the Broncos. What's this flag? It's a stork, a stork over a nest full of baby storks, but there's like droplets of blood coming down. It says Union Justice Confidence. Boy, what flag is that? I've never seen a flag like that. Anybody recognize this logo? The logo of the bloody evil stork mom? Yikes. Okay, let's go out the back door and see what's going on out here on this little front porch. Isn't that a differential? Oh my gosh, I don't know anything about cars, but that looks like a differential to me and an axle and part of a uh, leaf spring. Then there's a fire pit if you wanted to cook up some delicious ribs. There's some kind of mildly terrifying metal art in an old 55 gallon drum. And then the side of the cabin does have a really nice little shady porch. I mean, I'm here on February, I think it's the last day of February, February 28th. And it's nice. You know, I actually even had to stop at Walmart over in Lake Havasu City and buy me this Arizona tank top because I was wearing a long sleeve shirt and it was too hot. The weather is really nice here, but it's only the end of February. Imagine how hot it gets out here in like <laughs> June, July, August. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Okay, well, that's pretty much all there is to this little... I hesitate to even call it a cabin. And again, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be clickbaity and lead you to expect some super fancy cabin. I screwed up. It's my own dang fault. But there is one other kind of interesting thing here that I want to check out before I leave. And that is at the very end of the cul-de-sac here. It looks like a grave. Is that a grave? Or is it a historical marker? Oh my goodness. It's got writing on it. What could it be? Oh my gosh, it is. It's a grave. I mean, it's one of those desert graves where they just pile a bunch of rocks on you, but oh my gosh, it's going to be kind of hard to read this sign because the sun is right behind it and it's etched onto really shiny metal, but it says, I know it's hard to read, but it says the final resting place of Angela Bassett, July 11th, 2004. Well, hang on a minute. Isn't Angela Bassett a famous actress? I'm pretty sure. Well, apparently there was another Angela Bassett. Anyway, it says, Angela loved everyone and everyone loved her. She was always happy to meet people, probably because they usually gave her treats. And she always made everyone she met feel good and smile. It was amazing. Ange just had an aura of innocent Bassett charm that affected all who knew her. We brought her here because she loved hiking and picnicking. And though it's a little remote and lonely, it is peaceful and we wish her nothing but peace and happiness. If you've stopped to read this, you have in some small way now met Angela Bassett. And I think you will leave here smiling and feeling a little uplifted as Angela's happy spirit and charm know no earthly or mortal bounds. Oh man, it's weird because I already do feel happier just thinking about this mysterious other Angela Bassett. Perhaps you could return the feeling and leave a little treat for food was Angela's great passion and her appetite, I'm sure, also knows no earthly or mortal bounds. And maybe, just maybe, if you listen very closely, you'll hear her deep bark of excitement at the prospect of a doggy treat echoing across the desert on the wind. Oh, dang, they got me. I thought this really was somebody's grandma or aunt or somebody named Angela Bassett. It took me all the way to the part where they said she barked to figure out that this is somebody's dog. Okay, that explains why they named her Angela Bassett. It's probably a Bassett hound named after the actress Angela Bassett. Okay, but then it says, oh, look at the very bottom. Oh, this is sad. I don't know if you'll be able to read this, but it says, I miss you very much, my furry friend. I think they mean furry friend. Everyone does. I'll see you on the flip side. And yes, I'll bring a treat. Oh, that's like this one of the sweetest things I've ever read. And then look down here. Open up and say hi. Okay, so this is where you're supposed to leave treats for Angela Bassett. I wonder if anybody left her any treats. Well, there's a note, bunch of notebooks where people, you know, leave notes like, love to Angela, thinking of you, stuff like that. But nobody left her any dog treats? Oh, like here's one. There's a little bit of a little biscuit in there for her. Aw, well, I wonder if I have anything I can leave for Angela Bassett. Oh, here's another one. There's a couple little milk bones in here. It's mostly just paper though, paper and pens to write on the paper. 
Golly, what does this say? If you're gonna give your lady a pet name, better steer clear of names like Rusty or Bandit. It's not that kind of name. Wow, what the hey? That's wild. Uh, yeah, basically it's just a bunch of, well, kind of like, a, I guess a trail register or logbook. Let me see. Oh dang, look at that. Aloha from Hawaii. Some Hawaiians were here on January 26th, just a month ago. That's nuts. Oh, look at this. Came to town with the traveling Vietnam wall, March 2009. Nice spot. I buried my old yellow lab in a place like this. Miss him too. Norm Bergschma. Aw. Hi, Angela Bassett from Ted and Krista Desert Creeper Prospects back in 2019. So people have been coming here through the years. I mean, oh, look at that. 2004. An appropriate burial for a loyal friend. As a dog lover, I applaud you for the love of your dog. Denny Wilson. It's so formal. Denny. Gosh, look at this one. From 2006, Todd Bucha from Mecca, California. Stop by to say hello, but Angela looked like good dog. Man, you read some of these trail registers and it really makes you question the efficacy of the U.S. educational system. Anyway, it looks like the usual kind of stuff people write in these. Nothing like super exciting. I guess I'll go ahead and stuff all these notebooks back in here. Gosh, I don't think I have anything in my car that you could leave for a dog. I mean, dogs will leave just by anything, but something that would be okay to leave in a box that's not gonna start rotting or stinking to heaven. I mean, shockingly, I'm not traveling with any milk bones or anything like that. I don't have any crackers or cookies or anything. Well, let me just go look. Eh, maybe I forgot and I do have a bag of milk bones. Oh dang, all my stuff got all messed up from the bumpy road. Uh, what is, what would Angela Bassett want? Well, I'm pretty sure she doesn't want a banana and that would just rot. Pretty sure she does not want a bottle of sake. And don't ask me why I'm rolling with a bottle of sake. It's a long story. Um, hot cocoa, beans and rice, Jack Daniels. Oh dear, no, I don't think Angela Bassett would want any of that. Well, gee, I don't have anything that's suitable to leave in a box in the middle of the desert for a dead dog. <laughs> when am I gonna learn to start packing more thoroughly? <laughs> anyway, I guess the best thing I could do in little Angela Bassett's memory is find a safe place to camp because it's getting to be that time. It's like, oh gosh, I'm confused because of the time difference. I think it's only about four o'clock, but here in Arizona, it's five o'clock. Either way, it's getting to be time to find a place to camp. And yeah, I probably could just camp right here by this cabin. But generally when I'm rolling around traveling solo like this, I don't like camping by any attractions, whether it be a hot spring or a cabin or any kind of other noteworthy place because I really don't want people to roll up on me in the middle of the night. You know, I'd rather have my privacy. And besides, I have this whole amazingly beautiful desert from which to pick a campsite. And I feel like I'd be a fool to spend the night huddled back here when there's amazing vistas up ahead. And what's more, I think there's cell signal over that way. <laughs> so let me get back in my car and we'll bid adieu to Woody. Bye, Woody and Angela. Bye, Angela. And go look for a place to camp. There. Found an awesome campsite in the middle of this astoundingly beautiful and astoundingly desolate Arizona Desert Valley. The sun just went down over them mountains over there. That's what I love about Arizona is all the weird, pokey, spiry, castle-like ridgelines. Ugh. And I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning. Sunset over there, so I'll bet you anything the sunset, sunrise is gonna come up over there. <laughs> I can't wait to wake up in the morning and find more interesting stuff in these amazing castle-shaped mountains. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a fire to tend to and some relaxing to do as I sit here and enjoy this peaceful, beautiful desert evening. Cheers.